Reaper November has moved into Reaper December, mainly because I've really been enjoying myself painting off a bunch of uh, one-off miniatures and trying something a little new on each one, so I hope you're enjoying it. This time we have a dwarf from the Dungeon Dwellers line, and I started off by wanting to paint him sort of like a, a dwarf paladin, so we are starting off with a very shiny armor, and started off with steel over a black undercoat, and then over that I put the actual base color down, which is uh, gun metal, and I did that over steel because I didn't want the gun metal too dark, so some of the steel is still showing through, which lightens it up a little bit. After that, we add some dark Prussian blue, about two precision washes, sort of as a shade layer, and also just to add a little bit of clean blue steel color to the armor. After that, we put on a precision wash of black. That's going to be our real shade color. And you can overdo the blue a little bit, because at this stage, because we're going to put black over it, we're basically darkening or blackening the blue quite a bit. After finishing the armor, I decided, you know, a little bit of gold on this miniature would look really good. And then I painted a little more gold and a little more gold until the point where I pretty much repainted all the armor. So it's gone from a dwarf paladin at this point. I decided that maybe a dwarf king would actually look good. Just as with the steel armor, we have to put an undercoat underneath our metallic, so uh, because they're very thin, they can still shine through. So we start off with the flat earth, and then we move up to a mix of glorious gold and brown ink. So this is kind of our shade layer for our eventual base coat of straight glorious gold. Normally, if you repaint something on a miniature, it's not that big of a deal. We're using very thin layers, assuming you're using layering method. Uh, painting something over and over is really not going to build up the paint layers that much. The same is not true with metallics. If you repaint metallics a lot because the uh, material in them is much more solid, they're going to build up quite a bit. And I was kind of reaching the, that point with this miniature because I actually tried a few different ideas before even starting on what you've seen in this video. So that's something you may want to keep in mind that you may have to strip the figure if you're doing a lot of metallics over metallics. When you're highlighting gold, you want to make sure not to over highlight it because it then starts to look a little bit unrealistic, but uh, more on that later. Since we're now painting a Dwarven King, decided a gray beard would be proper and very simple. Just neutral gray with more and more white 
added for the highlights as we move a little bit further down the beard and highlighting all the raised edges. And then we're gonna finish that off with a little bit of brown because I wanted a little color in the beard. And you may have noticed some older gentlemen tend to get a little bit of yellow in their beard and that's the look I wanted to go for. For the cloak, uh, since we're painting a king, I wanted to go with royal colors. So that would be blues and purples. And actually went with a bit more of a red violet here, but uh, the same principle applies. Very fitting for royalty. Starting off with red violet, and then we are going to add successive amounts of magenta, and then a little bit of white. It was at this point, I was really kind of in a rut with this figure. While I painted a Dwarven King and used very royal colors, it just didn't seem very dwarfy. It seemed very royal, didn't seem like a dwarf. So once again, decided to go back and repaint an area, this time the cloak, and decided to do a fine fur pattern as well. And we're just using a short brushstroke texture pattern here to uh, give his cloak a little bit of fur. I've used this technique on hairy animals before, slightly different here. Rather than following a muscle pattern or uh, the, the direction that the hair usually goes on an animal, I'm trying to follow the folds in the cloak because I want to emphasize those. 
if we just did the hair up and down, we're gonna lose some of the depth of the folds and I wanted to keep that. So we start on the upper area of the folds and then we move the hair down into the recessed areas. Moving back to the armor, while our gold armor looks very kingly, it's also very plain. It's not very or ornamentated like you think a king would have. I considered painting some sort of freehand pattern on the armor, but I just couldn't decide what to paint. So instead we're going to go back and add a little bit more contrast to the armor. And also I'm stippling it on so it gives it a, a little bit more interestingness let's say, to the armor, rather than it being just plain and flat. Now remember when I said you don't want to over highlight gold? Well that's because the school of painting I come from is all about realism, and realism is not necessarily the best look or the look you may want. Uh, extreme contrast is extremely popular nowadays, so you can add more silver to your gold if you wish, it's just not the way I teach how to paint. However, in this case, I am going all the way up to straight silver to highlight the gold. Again, just to add more contrast and make the armor look a bit more interesting. Uh, but then we are going to give it a very light coat, a light glaze of yellow ink, just to tamp down the silver a little bit and keep it all within that kind of gold yellowish range. And there is our Dwarven King. Took a while to get there with a lot of U-turns, but uh, we finally finished, yay. The colors that we ended up with are much more interesting and work much better than what I had initially. The Violet Cloak, uh, once again, perfect for human royalty, just really didn't fit with a dwarf. And also the colors, having all that uh, violet on the back and none of it on the front, uh, was very distracting so using browns for the cloak really helps to tie it into all the yellowish browns that we used for the armor. My fur pattern is a little bit wonky. In some areas it's a little bit too uniform, in other areas it's a bit too messy. Uh, trying to paint this pattern that I've done before on animals, doing it instead on a cloak was uh, actually a, a little bit, I don't want to say disturbing, but unusual. So it needs a little bit more practice, I believe. I almost went back and repainted the cloak, but at this point I've repainted so much on the miniature, I think we're gonna stop here. And uh, the most important thing is that it's done. So if you finish a miniature and you're not completely happy with it, you could repaint it, or you can just leave it and use that knowledge that you learn and work on the next miniature. Totally up to you, but uh, our Dwarf King is done and I got lots more to paint, so let's get back to the desk and paint something else. Thanks for watching.
47 Keebler elves were killed today when a light plane plunged into their tree. E.L. Fudge remains in critical condition. <laughs>